This is RSP in the Update, episode 539, recorded Thursday, October 15, 2015. The Gobies in the Force. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for RSBNB Update. Joining Earth and myself this week is a guy by the name of Art of Dvorak in game, otherwise uh, known as Andrew. Hi. He's uh, one of Reed's very close friends. Very. I also live with him. Very yeah, he close. was the one who actually made the cameo on stream during uh, uh, the, the Vampire Quest. Mm hmm. Yes. So, anyways, speaking of quests, that's what we got this week. Call of the Ancestors. Oh boy. Um, I wanted to call this Call of the Ancients for some reason. Me too. Like, what, what is, is that? I Yeah, what is Call of the Ancients? Um, there's Defense of the, of the Ancients. Ancient. Defense it's of the Ancients Dota. is Dota. It's something in Diablo. Hmm. Well, I mean... I don't know. All of the ancestors just seems like a shitty name. Yeah, and I I mean there's lots of stuff in these various MMOs that, you know, play play names off each other and whatnot, so that could be um called the ancient you under the sun as it were, yes. Yeah. So, anyways, this is uh, uh the first bottle quest that's ever been added to the RS world. It's a novice quest, uh fairly short. Uh how long did it take you guys to do? Uh one second. Let me see. Let's see. Not literally. It took him one second, second to do. It uh, took me about uh, give or take. Well, my recording is thirty nine minutes, so it probably took me about thirty five. All right. Yeah, I, I want to say that's the amount of the time it would have taken me as well, but I had a, I had to do something in the middle of it that was rather important. But, uh, anyways. So this quest, you start by talking to Tunks on Tuska's back, which you can get to by talking to any of the astromancers around the world or, you know, just making your way through the desert if you want. So uh, who wants to give the quest summary here? Uh, did Reed anything does. happen? Well, <laughs> whoop, whoop, like... I, well, yeah, I don't... Uh, yeah. Not, yeah. not much of a story progression, really. Like, you just sort of went there. Like, I know you can describe every quest by you went there and you did stuff, but... You kind of did. Like, that's kind of what happened. Yeah. Yeah. You and, went there and you did stuff. There and see, the, were I think a few thing, puzzles and yeah. then it just abruptly ended. At a and, weird point. Yeah. And quest complete with that. Like, but. did that surprise you at the end that it was over? Yeah, I thought there was going to be... I thought that was, like, maybe, like, the halfway point. Yeah. I was expecting uh, shorter, to be honest. Interesting. Um, because, I mean, uh, novice quest, right? So it's not like... I think 40 minutes is about right for a novice quest. Yeah, yeah. But there were much shorter quests, too, like uh, the Fears of Guthics and whatnot, so... Um, Wait, Fears of Guthics? Well, well, the Tears of Guthics, but, you know, we can call it the Fears of Guthics, too, right? I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, you basically go to this uh, mass Okay, was well, so I the only one who had a hard time figuring out how the hell to get to this place? Um, I had to look up how to get to the place. Okay. Well, I well, been... not, I didn't have the same trouble you did, Reed. I watched your stream, and I I did not have that trouble. <laughs> I, I didn't like... think I had a, dr a jump into the water. <laughs> okay. No, I knew that wasn't right, but I was being so... told to go south, and that was the only thing south that I could click on. So I was like, right. this isn't right. So where did you end up going? Yeah, you were told to, to go north, and you were supposed to go south. Oh, okay. Yeah, share that. So did you Same go thing. through Tuska's back, or did you take an Astromancer? 
I took an astromancer. Oh, okay. So is, wait, how? What? Uh, is, is there, there another there, option? Yeah, yeah, you can take an astromancer and teleport immediately to. Tuska's That's what house. I did. Is there another option? Yeah, you can run through the desert and jump and swim. You you can swim. Oh right, I remember that when it happened. I didn't know that. Like, the week it came out, I was like, all right, let's just jump into the ocean and swim over there. What's the worst that could happen, right? Bitten by a shark? <sighs> Anyways. Anyway. So you got there. That's the Yes, story. I got there eventually. Then after that, uh, it, you basically go to the uh, eastern village on Maz Cab and uh, talk to the uh, various gobies there, uh, specifically Tunks and... He'll say that, well, the Eru are invading despite, you know, the uh, raid bosses' uh, best efforts or the raiders' best efforts to keep them at bay. And uh, the village is, you know, uh, facing the facing the possibility of being wiped out. I don't know why I had such a problem putting that sentence together. So after that, uh, well, what what is it we normally do in quests? You do shit. We we train we train up and comers to do the uh, dirty work for us, I guess, and that is what this quest okay. uh, ultimately uh, comes up to being about, and that is uh, training three gobies to uh, fight the Eru. Um, oh. Oh. It's the trivia says the quest was incorrectly stated to be named Call of the Ancients in a stream. Okay, so that's where that came from. Oh, okay. To go to go back to that. Sorry, I just ah, saw that. Right, and I watched that stream when they first talked about it, so that's where that came from. Okay, excellent. All right. Well, that problem anyway. solved. Good. Good. Uh. So anyways, uh, we also have to uh, go in after that to talk with Tunks, Pex, and Lunch. And, well, we first uh, help them gather wood to uh, bring them into the village to, well, whatever you use wood for, repair buildings, start fires, uh, that kind of thing. Why can't we just cut down a goddamn tree? Yeah, I was thinking that too. But anyways, uh, so you help them get wood, and then after that, uh, you basically get a brief little tutorial of the mechanics of this quest um and that's where this quest gets interesting for me because i don't think we've ever had a mechanic like this before where you direct control uh npcs mm -hmm. so uh, you basically click <coughs> on them and you then... have you have controlled npcs before but not to this extent exactly exactly uh and you know the three gobies each have a uh, specialty. Lunch has a, a big head, so he's able to head by walls and open them up if there's cracks in them. Uh, I believe it is... Uh, who is it? Is it Tunks? That is the Agile one? Uh, agile. There's right. one that's Agile, and then there's one that's small, but I don't remember their names. Yeah, neither do I, unfortunately. It's like a two-foot gap. Like, come on. Hey, you the other... Anyone can jump that. Yeah, but they don't That's, have agility that was, like us. That was my problem. One of my problems with this quest. All right. Uh, I guess they were midgets or something. Yeah. So. Peck is the one who is small. Lunch is the one that headbutts the wall, as I said. And, well, Tunks is just the agile one. So uh, that's where that goes from there. the agile one. Yeah. Only distinguishing characteristic. Yeah, because well, I think they're... the small one has it bad. Like you're, you're just small. <laughs> yeah, well, like he, could, he literally couldn't do anything but be tiny and push buttons. Well, there's <laughs> like... there's reasons for being tiny. Like if you need to go through a window or something, it's often better to have a small person, right? How often do you need to go through a window? Like yep. once in <laughs> ever. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, once we uh, locked the keys in the house and we sent Mike in through the basement window to unlock it. <laughs> I love how Mike when I wanted to go work you. out. <laughs> That's, okay. What was, what was that, Andrew? I had to go through a window once when I wanted to leave my room. Really? 
Why was that? <laughs> we wanted Andrew to go to dinner with us, but he wouldn't. He's like, no, I gotta go work out. And then 45 minutes later, it was still going on, so I just left through the window. What was still going on? Me bothering the- him. Oh. <laughs> I can be very persistent. I thought that was my job. What, to be irritating? And persistent. Is it? Yeah, you, you've you tasked me with that for numerous people I before. I tasked you with that. <laughs> it's your quest, Shane. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so uh, we learned how to control the gobies, get a brief little tutorial on uh, their mechanics and whatnot, and then, well, um, we had westward to somewhere and i don't know if you want me to say this we head westward to the just nemi do forest. it get it over with i said the e we said we head westward to the nemi forest <laughs> <laughs> wait why is that funny i he say the forest you're exaggerating it i said forest he doesn't say forest he goes forced oh <laughs> But anyways, once you get there, you're given the option, do you want to go explore the Nemi Forest like normal, or do you want to use it for Call of the Ancestors? And you choose the Call of the Ancestors option, and you get an instance version of the Nemi Forest. (laughs) See, I said the E. I said the E. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Okay. (laughs) I still don't see what's so funny. It's he thinks I should be saying it funny. forest. I, I don't understand the difference between. And I'm saying forest. Saying. It says forced. Like forced. Oh, okay. I can see why you think that's funny now. Anyways, so once inside the Nemi forest, forest, sorry, <laughs> uh, you discover an ancient Gobi and. Uh, you talk to this ancient Gobi and he will have a set of trials. It was really the, weird the to me. Yeah, it was. Because, I mean, you have this thing in there, and if you've explored the forest before, um, you would expect to have seen it, right? I so guess. It just, right. it just appears. Or was it weird in another way to you? It was weird that they kind of just shoehorned some puzzles in. Yeah, we'll like, get there. Yeah, oh, he also looked way. like a giant So... It was um, a turtle. How was it? What? No, not that. The old thing. The first old thing. I, oh yeah, he was a little, he was phallic. I, the, I, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't see how you guys can see that. I got a picture on the screen right now. I mean, I'm pretty any, sure of, of a. It, it's a chalice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You kind of definitely walked into that, Shane. <laughs> I, I still don't see it, but anyways. You still don't? Okay. I thought you had a picture of it up. Yeah, I do, but I, I don't I don't see the reference you're uh, uh, mentioning. But. I don't know. Um, there were, well, I'm not going to go into uh, other past comments on that subject matter because that's not appropriate for this podcast. Um, but anyway, so yes, you, you talk to the, the ancient Gobi and he has a set of trials for, uh, the young Gobies and this is where the puzzles come in. And now you feel these were shoehorned in, Andrew? Yeah, I, I, well, I did like the puzzles themselves, but I mean, you just kind of go in there and you find out that this guy is... Dying, I guess you can say. And then he's just like, oh, by the way, do these puzzles for some magic powers. Yeah, well, I mean, you can't just... Yeah, like, I didn't even get the point of that. And, like, I feel like the referent, like, when they painted themselves up, Andrew missed the screenshot of my what the <laughs> face, but... Um, it was a what <laughs> face. A very what the <laughs> face. Well, I'm sure we can go back on the stream and get it, but okay. I can't. I couldn't rewind for some reason. Well, you like can I was rewind after, to... but we'll talk. We'll, I'll handle that. Um, so you, you didn't basically. So you're saying you basically didn't get the whole point of uh, this stage to. No, he didn't get the point of them painting themselves. 
Oh. Yeah, like they looked like there was no reason <sighs> for them to. Be I missed there. that like entirely. It was a reference to something. I missed but... that entirely. Like did it was, that... a... it was the bit where they were like, "Close your eyes." And you're like, okay. okay. And it was a small cut scene, and then they were like, "Yeah, let's go." So basically, they painted themselves with war paint. Is what you're saying? Kind yeah. Of. You know, I. I, I missed that part in the quest, but uh, looking at it now, I, I want to say that makes sense because tribal cultures have been war painting themselves for centuries. So why wouldn't these guys? Why wouldn't they? Because they. Why would they? They said that they said they they needed to look the part. Yes. It says after another shortcut scene, the trio reveals their change of appearance, and then you head inside. But Their change in appearance was paint. When you were a child trying to figure yourself out and, you know, figure out how the world worked, didn't you like to dress up and act the part even if you weren't exactly acting the part out as you actually did? I think we're reading a little too far into that. No, that's that, that's exactly what this is saying. It's like if you dress up as a firefighter on Halloween, you're doing that. You're wanting to act the part, but you're not actually doing that. What? It just helps. Is all I'm saying. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll give it to you. Okay, you. you can you can have that one, I guess. So <laughs> now the puzzles. Did you guys find these difficult at all? No. No. Same here. Uh, and I mean, it, it, it was a cool dynamic, though. But no, they. Yeah, weren't. I enjoyed them. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean. Uh, I really like the uh, the third one the most. I think that one was the most involved and, uh, you know, illustrates what a puzzle can be in RS that isn't exactly a puzzle. That you that wasn't, was the find. easiest one, though. Really? Well, maybe not the but from the first one, but the, the second one, one was the harder one. Okay, the second one was the hardest one. Yes, I will give you that. Um, I, I like that one the best. I like the harder ones the best. Yeah, because you have to use the agility and whatnot. And uh, for anyone who uh, didn't catch it, but that's where the three strengths of the Gobies come in that we mentioned uh, at the beginning of the quest. Uh, Lunch, you use him to stand on the heavy blocks. Uh, Tunks is the agile one. And Peak is uh, the one uh, who is, well, what's his power again? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He's small. Small. Tiny one. Yes, tiny. Thank that's you. his power, being small. Yeah, well, Just I mean, power. well, some people have to be small and uh, others, uh, I mean, it, it just creates a balance, right? So. <laughs> All right. So you basically uh, work through these puzzles and then after that you gain a little bit of uh, extra magic power each time, uh, three of them in total. Then after that, uh, well, I guess I should ask anybody want to discuss the puzzles any further or are we happy with saying they were simple enough i mean they're pretty simple puzzles okay all i want to say about them then is that if i was introducing someone to questing on rs this is actually a quest i would have them play first uh after the ashdale quest what's the ashdale quest um it was a quest that came out last year when uh, the new tutorial place of Ashdale was added, and it relied oh, right, on right, right. environment effects to uh, guide the way. So, right. All right. And then after that, you have to basically fight the incoming invasion. Uh, now, apparently this was harder when it first came out, and they made it easier because... They should uh, have kept it harder, because when I played it, it was stupid. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I mean, once you figure out that you can click and then target in the path of where they're coming, you can just basically... I just spam you, clicked and everything died. Once You I spam was... click the spawn and it's just done. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much the way you do it because the, the spell doesn't fire immediately. It fires with a couple seconds of delay and you can queue them up. So if you click five times in a various area, you'll get five spells bombarding the area. Uh, that you click. How was it harder before? Uh, the, basically, uh, the arrows and whatnot uh, move faster, and uh, the spell uh, timing was uh, changed. Could you lose? Yes. Yeah, you can lose. Oh, really? Um, it even saves your progress, though. 
like among the waves. Interesting. Yeah. Um, like, uh, I mean, I, I just did one of them and I let them overrun me to see what happens. And, uh, when one of the gobies dies, uh, you just start over from, uh, your last saved wave. So, hmm. but, uh, the change they made was that, uh, they decreased the spawn rate. They gave the gobies more health and, uh, yeah, that's it. So that's how they made it easier though. I mean, I didn't play it before the uh, little hotfix, but that's just uh, our opinion from being relatively seasoned adventurers. So, uh, if you oh, can use a computer, it's easy. Yeah, and and like I said, if I was introducing someone to RS and I wanted to show them questing, this quest would be at the top of the list for me. Okay, I can um, give that to you because uh, I mean it tells you how a quest works and it gives you a bit of a uh, idea of how a boss fight can work um it does. wait wait well what? no well i mean <laughs> boss fight in the sense of someone else doing it for you and that well in future quests you might have to do this yourself i didn't get that at all oh no. okay another thing i took from this quest was that um the mechanics of controlling the gobies that's interesting and uh we could potentially apply that to higher level quests in the future so yeah i was hoping that would go into the quests uh following this one yeah and i i mean that's that's got to be the number one thing that i'm taking away from this quest is it's a new mechanic which is always good for jagex um they need to build on it like they- you remember earth the back on the ashdale quest uh, you did not get the fact that there was a puzzle in there and that the environment helped you, right? Yeah. So that that's the same kind of thing I'm pointing at here, is that, okay, well, we have a quest. It's deceptively <coughs> simple, but we need to take away that this mechanic is something good that can be used going forward. So that's, yeah. that's my take on the quest. Um, anything else before we give it a rating? I got nothing. All right. And There's not much to talk about. Um, no, it, yeah. it was a novice quest. Yeah, uh, it was just it just happened. Simple. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, I mean, one quest point, 1k magic X, XP, some uh, Gobi war paint overrides. So you, if you want to look like one of those warriors, you can. No, that's okay. Mm. Also, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mazcab weapon overrides, if that's your cup of tea. Again, no. I didn't that's try okay. it. All right. And then uh, something for higher level players, uh, raid reroll tokens, which basically um, allows you to reroll your um, raid XP. And, uh, well, what this does is it uh, gives you a chance of getting better rewards at the end of the day. So. And then you get the teleport override. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I Where, got one. That I wasn't think. listed. Is that from a different quest? I have a teleport override. Yeah, it could be from a different quest, because I don't think that's uh, the one here. What teleport are you using, then? Let me um, log on and tell you the name of it. All right. While we're doing that, uh, ratings out of five for this? Three. Shane, you can go. Okay. Um, Yeah, I'll go go with three as well. Uh, I mean... There wasn't anything bad about it. It didn't break any molds, but the uh, main thing I'm happy about is the new mechanics. So mm-hmm. three for me as well. Um, I guess coming from a, I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four because there was nothing really bad about it, and it can definitely be built upon in a really good way. But there's nothing really awesome about it so i can't really give it a five but there wasn't anything wrong with it so i'd have All to give right. it a five. true and and i should mention t- to the listeners the reason you're on the show is um compared to us you're a relatively uh uh newer player so you could say that what was <laughs> <laughs> your opinions on this as you know not having done all the quests not having you know killed nomad and 
fought through the fifth age and sixth age. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, do you want to see more like this? You think it's a good way to introduce newer players like yourself? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I I've gotten a good bit of quests under my belt, I guess. But um, yeah, I can see this as a good quest to start out on. And that teleport is called Guthixen War Teleport. Yeah, that's not from this. Sorry. Oh, I wonder where that came from. Because it just kind of appeared. I don't know. I have no idea. All right. Well, that's called the Ancestors. Uh, hopefully, we'll see more on Mazcab in the future. Would you guys like to go back for another quest? Oh, I mean, I guess we kind of have to, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Well, on to t some tweaks and fixes then uh, for this week. Uh, familiar timers will no longer pause when hidden inside the Grand Exchange to prevent the use of permanent beasts of burden. So, what? The, uh, yeah. The idea was is that uh, you could open a beast of burden, go sit at the GE, teleport back to the GE, and then, uh, like, if you were runecrafting or something, each time you were out of the GE, it would only be ticking down. But if you were there, it would be paused, so that would make it mu last much longer than the 56 minutes that the yak uh, lasts for. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, all beasts of burdens now have a greatly increased uh, life point total. Which is which is good because if anyone's noticed, if you're doing any kind of serious PVM, your beast of burden is the first thing to die. So yeah, uh, staff and battle staff buy limits have been increased to one thousand every oh my God. four hours. Yes. Yay. Yeah, yeah, one hundred before, right? Yes. Uh, so and they needed to do this because in having the limit it was severely limiting an option for crafting i think I mean, yes 100 it's like oh okay i'm done with that in 15 minutes so um and of course 15. the other option yeah takes like five. Oh, okay and of course the other option was to uh uh you know just have your friends buy them for you bypassing the ge but that's kind of cumbersome to do so uh definitely good that they did this uh, box traps and bird snares now have a left click reset option to set the trap back up without having to put it in your inventory first. Wait, Which left click? Oh, yay! I know. Wait, is it left click? Yeah. Or it, right it, click? Oh it my is god. Yay! Oh. What is that? What do we... Okay. This That's is really hunters. good. Because basically, if you had a creature come and it would, like, if if the hunt, for example, would fail, like let's say it tried to go in but it escaped your trap, uh, your trap would be destroyed and you would need to pick it up, put it in your inventory, and put it back down. Whereas now it's just one click. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that'll help with Hunter, I think. Uh, that was definitely one of the uh, things of Hunter that made it uh, painful to do. Um, anyways, you guys have anything else in the uh, patchy patch notes? Patchy patch. Mm. No, All I don't right. have anything. Andrew? Oh, nope. wait, no. The player owned house options interface now is a call butler button. That's cool. Mm. Okay. That's good, I guess. I mean, that totally defeats the purpose of the little bell that you can build in the dining room, right? I guess. Ding! All right. Well. <laughs> that was beautiful, Shane. But, I mean, calling yeah. a butler with your voice kind of defeats the purpose of making the bell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But, of course, well. you can't hear your character, so no more. Ding! Hmm. I thought you. I thought they added in sounds for your character. No, that's one of the things that doesn't have uh, sound. So wait, what? No, there was something that they added sounds for NPCs in because, like, during combat. 
Oh right? yeah, right. Yes, for NPCs. Yes. Okay, because yeah. they were interesting noises. Oh, definitely. Every time you kill a Guthix or Zamorak warrior. Ah! <laughs> Wait, is that the noise? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Ex- except a little bit uh, lower than he did it, but in general, yes. It's pretty bad. All right. There was also a developer Q&A this week focusing on quests. Uh, I got a couple of uh, interesting tidbits to share with you guys if you haven't watched it. These are just things that jumped out at me. Um, Here's what they're looking at for potential bottle quests. Uh, The Desert, Signature Heroes, Penguins, and Mr. Mardo. Ooh, Penguins. Yeah. I mean, does it make sense for the desert goddamn time. and penguins to be bottle quests? Like, wouldn't we like those to have the, uh, like, full attention of a regular I'd quest? like them... Wait, what? They're making... No! Do a bottle quest for the penguins or the desert. Expl- explain me bottle quests. That's what we just did here. It's a quest that uh, uses existing assets in game, so it they has can be literally nothing quicker. else to do with anything in the game. Yeah, basically. Okay, wait. What's Shane's explanation? <laughs> Are you familiar with the concept of, of a bottle TV episode? No. Okay. Basically, what that is in RuneScape terms is that you have a quest, and pe- they want to get more quests in game. So what they've decided to do for 2016 and this first uh, uh, Mascab quest was create a quest that used existing assets to uh, fast track development time. So these quests are going to be shorter, have less impact on overall uh, lore in game, and just be designed to look at aspects that have not been looked at for quite some time in RS. Namely, in this oh. case, the Desert, Signature Heroes, Penguins, and Mr. Mordo. Oh, okay. So, and, you know, I, I thought you'd feel that, that same way there, Reed, about the desert and the penguins being bottle quests. Because I think those two storylines, yeah, because I, I, I think those two storylines are have merit on their own right and deserve to see uh, proper endings, especially the desert one, right? And the penguins. Oh, I thought Both we of them. The penguins. Okay. Are we? Uh, I literally don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't remember either for... Uh, the the penguins but i know we're definitely not finished with the desert so it's been so long yep so uh yeah i feel the same way but mr mordo i mean who wants a quest about him i don't don't know anyways uh the pirate finale is planned but they have no eta (sighs) so it's mapped out uh the soul altar is not planned to come out with nomad's elegy but it could come out with any quest series, potentially, so they want ideas on that, um, which I found interesting. So maybe we need to get behind it on Rune Labs and demand the Soul Altar to have a quest. And in response to winding down the Sixth Age, no, it's just begun. The Seventh Age is not being considered yet, and before they would do that, they need to start planting the seeds for the Seventh Age, so to speak. Which... As an example, planting six age seeds was like well Gothic sleeps and ritual. Of Wait, God. so like they're planning on doing a seventh age? No, not not yet, not at all. No. Okay, good. Not at all. Six age has just begun, and they want to explore that further. So, yeah, that was this week's uh, developer Q and A quest. That's what I found interesting, and I thought the bullet points we could share with you guys here. But of course, if you want to find the uh, full stream of this, uh, there will be a link in the show notes at update.rsbnb.com. Nice plug. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Anything RS related uh, before we move on to the questions? I got nothing. All right. Well, our first question is an audio question from the RR man. And Reed, I think you should buckle up. I think you're going to laugh. We already listened to it. Shh, they're not supposed to know that. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> the R man here. Just a couple of quick questions for you. Uh, Earth, last week you had a bit of a angry splurt out on uh, 
NVIDIA graphics cards, I think is what it was. I just wondered what your problem with them was. Uh, is it just because you're a fanboy and have an AMD card? Because from my understanding, the differences are really minute. It's it's not like, you know, Apple and PC where, you know, you can, we won't get into that again. But uh, yeah, well, what's your problem with, uh, like, sort of NVIDIA cards? Because I've had one for years. Works fine. Does everything I need it to, you know? And, uh, yeah, sorry to make this just an episode full of confusion. But moving on to Shane, you were talking about something last week, and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. I, uh, yeah, did a bit of research, couldn't figure it out, couldn't, uh, yeah, sounded kind of interesting. But, um, what's an Iron Man? Yeah, (laughs) Iron Man, never heard of that before. Uh, yeah, so if you could clear that up for me, it'd be fantastic. Uh, well, I'm going to go out and have a walk now in the local forest, and, uh, yeah, (laughs) peace out, guys. (laughs) Wait, so Shane, if... We didn't listen to it before. How did you know it was funny? You have just pointed out a temporal paradox. Shane. <laughs> you can't do that. There's that voice again that everyone can so imitate around here. <laughs> is your whole family doing it now? Well, well, my parents, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's beside the point. Um, explain. Why do you prefer AMD over? I think you should explain why NVIDIA sucks, Shane. Or, With all the issues you've been having. Or NVIDIA, as the RR man called it. <laughs> I have to point that one out. Um, I didn't hear that. Oh, okay. No, I... Okay. I will tell you why I am having troubles with NVIDIA now if you tell people why you like AMD. Can I start? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I'll I'll go ahead and start. I started out with an uh, NVIDIA card, a GTX 660. Um, I liked it for the most part. It was very good for the price at that time. One problem I did have with it, um, the first problem I had with it was that the fan, the fans on it, or actually, yeah, it was one fan. The fan on it would not... Um, automatically get set to auto. So when I first turned the PC on, it would be be at fifty percent, and it would not change. So I'd be in game, and my computer would crash because it'd get too hot, and I didn't even know it until I found out I had to start my computer up and hit, um, I don't know whatever the uh, setting ones was the auto. Uh, Auto adjust the speed. Adjust the speed. I don't know. I forget the actual wording of it, but I could not find an option, and I never did find an option to make it do that every time I started up until the next driver update, and that really pissed me off. I've always had <laughs> tr- trouble troubles with their drivers, <sighs> and right. ever since getting my two seventy, I haven't had problems with the drivers at all. And read? You next, Shane. Okay. Well, I, I've been an NVIDIA user going way, way back to, you know, the days of uh, uh, the GT240. Horse and carriage? The wit? Yeah, yeah, horse and carriage. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, way back when, like, the year 2000, I've been an uh, NVIDIA user. And um, I've had a couple of AMD cards along the way. And, I mean... The the performance of them was okay, probably though because it was before I did all the research that I do now into hardware, but I did have another relatively good AMD card at one point that was just, it was just horrible out of the box, so I returned and got NVIDIA, and been doing that ever since, but uh, starting in 2014, I did have some problems with my EVGA uh, 670 card. Uh, I sent it back, I got back. It didn't work. Did the same thing. Sent it back again. Didn't work. Sent it back again. Got one that worked. Yay! But you know what the you know what the um, problem with this one was? The DVI ports didn't work. Nor did the HDMI. So, I so just it had doesn't to use, work. No, I it has it, it has doesn't dis, work. No, it has Display Port <laughs> that works. But it doesn't work. Display Port works, and that's the one port that works on my 
card right now, and you know, it, Wait, you this kept might. It? I yeah, did keep I'd it send because it back I so quickly. I was sick and tired of dealing with it because it was two weeks to send it back each time because I'm in Canada. If I was in the U.S., it would have been quicker. Maybe you should move. You know, America is just a great nation. Mm-hmm. I, the I, greatest I, nation on this planet. I agree. I agree. God bless America. I agree, and we might be talking about that next week, but we'll we'll hope for the best. But anyways, um, uh, moving forward with that, I think I will go AMD next time because I am having problems with this card again. Uh, display driver quits working randomly in Windows, and I mean, I have to unplug the monitor and plug it back in to get 1080p. Mm-hmm when my computer starts up so it, it's it's a pain it's a pain so uh are you thinking good. about this generation or the next oh i i i think i'm going to stretch it to next generation if i can okay yeah because there's nothing wrong with this card it still uh works and you know does adequate frame rates and you know another problem i've had with the with the well yeah i mean 60 fps right um, but another problem I've had with this card is it is very loud, and I think it's got a coil wine issue. So, yeah. Mm. It is a coil wine issue, or is not? Well, I think it's coil wine. I'm not oh. 100% sure. My ears I mean, aren't. If it's a high My ears aren't as good as uh, some of us here, so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, All so right. that, that's my stance on AMD versus NVIDIA today. Um, I actually have zero things against NVIDIA. Um, I just prefer AMD because of uh, the company Sapphire. They don't make um, NVIDIA cards. They only make AMD cards. uh, And they have some of the best customer service um, that I've ever encountered. Um, like, card was like six months out of warranty and is having a coil line issue. I had opened a ticket and they're like, sure, send it in, we'll fix it. Um, yeah, that's okay. And, and pretty I mean, much it, it's not nearly as extreme as, um, graphic or, uh, processors because, yeah. AMD processors suck. I would <laughs> argue that if you want any shred of performance, you go Intel. The only reason you should go AMD is if you're on a budget. And mentally. A very big budget. Big I mean, budget. small, really. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, you're, you're, t- you're totally right on going based on customer service. Customer service is uh, something that uh, I think in the 21st century is going to be a defining uh, feature of uh, which products people choose to use and whatnot. And that's partially also why I like As it Apple. should be. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and, oh, another reason I went NVIDIA back in the Dark Ages was uh, Linux support, because in 2003 to probably 2008, maybe 2009, uh, AMD cards did not play that well with Linux, which isn't mm-hmm. really much of an issue anymore, but, uh, yeah. All right. And, um, well, I, I, you know, I was... That's just the dialect we use here in terms of the way we speak. Uh, I I listened to the news the other day, and someone actually on the news also said iron. They also said you know, people on the news also say harassment and details, and they're also wrong. Yes, but that's just the way people speak up here, right? And well, it's I, it ain't right. Well, I mean. Like, if, if, if Brad was on the show, he'd be saying tomato all the time, But right? Brad is sexy. Have you heard his <laughs> voice? <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. You're not wrong. I know. <laughs> Shane just called a man sexy. That's great. But so You heard Brad. it here first, boys and girls, on RSB&B. Update. 
Thank you. Come join us on Tuesdays. <laughs> Come join us Tuesdays at the RSBNB group of game servers. <laughs> Shane ha- for PC is, gaming. Uh, if you want to get that joke, then come to PC gaming <laughs> on Tuesdays at 10, 10, 10 p.m. Eastern. Right on that. Right on. But yeah, I mean Iron Man, Oregon, um, Forced. So it, it's just the way we see say things, just like you said, uh, Nvidia. So there you go. It's Nvidia. Nvidia. <laughs> yes. It is Nvidia because they say Nvidia. Anyways, all right. Uh, <laughs> what do you two want to take the questions uh, here from Titus? Read them. Oh, can I read them? Please do. <clears throat> Not sure if and my questions have been asked before in the podcast, probably. So feel free to ignore any of the questions you might find irrelevant. Question one. What do you think are the most important quests for an Iron Man account? Based on XP, item, slash daily rewards, maybe. Question two. Same, but for achievement diaries. Which task sets do you think are the most important ones? Question three. When do they release NX... When will they... Wait, what? Oh. When they release the NXT client. Do you think the minimum system requirements will increase considerably? Or do you think it will likely stay the same? I'm using an Asus T100 tablet to play RS sometimes, and I don't know if it'll work because it only has 2 gigabytes of RAM. All right. Well, uh, there, there's an important distinction to be made between Iron Man and non-Iron Man, and that is that uh, sometimes they don't get uh, uh, the full rewards that the rest of us do. And I don't have an Iron Man account right now, so I can't comment on quest wait, reward. Wait, wait, wait. Right parody. now? Oops, yes, I did say that. Mm. Anyways. The plot thickens. <laughs> yes. Um, but... Um, I would say focus on the achievement diaries uh, directly, and my two most important achievement diary items are the Ardoyan Cloak 4, not only for thieving, but also for my herb runs to the um, Ardoyan patch, because it teleports you right there. And the other one, uh, just for, you know, general getting around, uh, the Karamja set for the Shiloh Village gloves. You clap your hands, and the world changes, and you appear in Shiloh Village. So I would say focus on those. Um, but quest-wise, you know, just unlock all your teleports and uh, whatnot going forward. Do them all. Yeah, yeah. Do all the quests that you can. And uh, I want to say questing greatly improves your RS experience, not only from an immersion point of view, but just from all the little rewards you pick up along the way. So we yes. are big fans of questers here. And uh, that's what our clan is actually focused about, uh, clan quests. So if you do find nice questing enjoyable, <laughs> uh, you can contact either of us and we'll uh, hook you up with the right places to go to apply and get an invite. Nice plug. Yeah, I just slipped them right in. But <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Try. Anyways, um... Yeah, I I can't really comment on Iron Man quests, unfortunately. But I did, <laughs> just did I did want to comment on the achievement diaries. So, uh, any other uh, recommendations, quest or achievement diary or reward set wise? All of them. Okay. Next one, uh, achievement diaries. Oh yeah, okay, we handled that. We killed two birds with one stone. Right on there. Excellent. Right on. And uh, NXT client, uh, based on what they said at RuneFest, it will work if your current computer plays RS, and you'll get better performance than you do now, so I wouldn't worry. But of course, if you do have a high-end system, you'll be able to max it out. Old. Yeah, and they said that's what they're focusing on, because that's what the HTML5 client in Chrome was not able to do, handle the low (laughs) end of the spectrum. Low end? (laughs) That's some bullshit. It couldn't handle my computer. That's that's true. Same here. And, I mean, we don't exactly have wimpy computers, you know? 
No, at the time I had like tier what three graphics card. Yeah. <laughs> so it it was a big issue with that, but it'll be all good going forward, so I wouldn't worry. Uh, Asus T100 is the uh, Transformer book series, believe it or not. That's an interesting name for a laptop. Just looking up the specs here right now. Uh, internal, where is the CPU and whatnot? I want that. 1.3 gigahertz quad core. All right. So thank you, Titus, for that question. Uh, I'll read the next one and we'll let uh, Earth take the last one here since he... Uh, loves talking to Colton. This one's from Adirond Cronon. Uh, in relation to Jade Gizmo's post about old accounts having their names deleted and so kind of removing memories from the game's earlier days, uh, do you feel any melancholy when looking back at how the game was when you first started playing, the friends you made, and the things you did in the game now and realize how different it is and seeing how many of your old friends have left the game? Uh, would you want it to, to stay the same, or are you happy with the way it has become? There's more to that. Oh, right. I can only think of the user Buzzpatch, who is the only player left in RS Classic who has never quit, never bought it. All of his friends are gone, either quit or moved on to newer versions of the game, yet he chooses to stay in the game he loves to play. I think that's quite admirable. I do, too. Um, I, I gotta say, it's, a, it's all about the community and what you make of it. Um, if you have friends in game, definitely seek them out in real life if, as, as we've done here and, and we've created this, right? Because we're all friends here discussing RS. And... Be careful if you do that, though. Yes, the internet that's... is a scary place. That, that's a very good point. Thank you. The for... bad man will get you. Thank you for putting that out there. I forgot that disclaimer. But um... <laughs> Disclaimer, <laughs> don't do this. The big bucks. <laughs> and, I mean, that... That's kind of the way I've dealt with it, too. People leaving and moving on past RS. I'll just, you know, strike up a normal friendship with them if you uh, like chatting with them and that kind of thing. Uh, but game-wise, um, I'd like to think we've improved from where we've been. And that's, you know, my one big regret about old school is that didn't stay as the 2007 time capsule of RS. And it's instead become its own game. So that's kind of regrettable. But... Um, my memories going back are, of course, based on this podcast and all the screenshots and videos I've taken over the years. So that's how I compensate with that. And I think at the end of the day, you can't stop progress. And RS will always be the same. It's the same game, same general concept. And I'd like to invoke a quote here that is uh, is very uh, telling in this case. And that is, the more things change, the more they stay the same. All right, that's the show. Let's wrap up. <laughs> all right how about you guys um eh. i mean yes but i'm happy where it is now yeah progress is good mm -hmm. and and i mean you have quite a few friends that you've met uh from game uh in real life too so mm-hmm so it, it, it's just a natural progression, but as you said, be careful. Um, how about you, Public Andrew? Public locations, y'all. Yes, yes. Um, you, you started many years ago and you came back last year, kind of. I believe it was 2005, 2004 even, right around that area. I started playing because one of my friends told me to play and I played with him a little bit, but, it, you know, it was very minimal because it wasn't my computer and my mom was convinced that um the jagex files that were put in your documents for like um cache reasons yeah they she thought they were viruses um so <laughs> <laughs> i didn't play very long but i, I like playing with my friends and stuff like that but there's nothing really i missed because i didn't get too far into the game and when i came back you know i came back when dungeoneering was new and, you know, nothing I got into really changed much, so. Yep. RS is RS. I mean, it's, it's supposed to change. Thing. Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. Thank yep. you, Adirond Cronon, otherwise known as Touchpad Pro. Now, now Earth, you can take this question. 
boy. Okay. Uh, this question is from Colton. Hello, dear hosties. I hope y- you all are. I hope you are all well. Questions for this week are as follows. What is the best kind of potato? What is your optimal water temperature for swimming? How long would you say the actual leaf color changing phase of autumn lasts in your respective locations? My fiance maintains that it's longer in Virginia than in Indiana, but I have a hard time believing her. And hypothetically, say this is coming from a person who has been sinking further and further into the quicksand that is Apple's ecosystem, starting all the way back with the first-gen iPod Shuffle. What steps would one theoretically take from this position to break free and eventually escape the grip of Apple? Note, this may or may not not. be hypothetical. Love, Colton. Colton's reading my mind this week, especially about number four. I was actually thinking about that. All right. What? Yeah, I was thinking about number four. You're... What? No, just 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 read number one and let's get started with some potatoes here. Shit, um, I don't know. Sweet potatoes, duh. They're the best potatoes there I... are out there. They taste good and they're great for you. Good and good for you. All right. If I had to choose a way to treat my potato, it would be uh, a, a mashed potato with uh, treat well, it. You mash well, it up. Mash yeah, them up, boy. Garlic mashed potatoes, actually. Time to a tree and mash them up. <laughs> that's that's what I would go for. Garlic mash. Those are always good. What about the monster mash? I have no idea what that is. You what? Philistine. Philistine. We could also say coltator is the best uh, potato. Why? Right, because Colton asked a question? Indeed. <laughs> There, there's a story behind that one. Is there? Yeah, there is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you, you guys seem relatively indifferent on potatoes then. Should we move on to swimming? Sure. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll just say it being landlocked here, I never learned how to swim. There was never, never a need. But the I don't think you want it to be really bonds. cold. I would say warm rather than cold, but that's that's what I gotta say on this. Read. Um, I mean, warm, <laughs> like thirty-seven degrees warm, or Jesus, Shane. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm no, no, no. I mean Celsius, thirty-seven Celsius. Um, why me, would me... I want Celsius? <laughs> I don't want any of that shit in my water. 98 degrees. I don't measure my the temperature of the water before I get in a pool. Oh, I just get in okay. a pool and it's either really hot or really cold or good. Or All just right. hot or cold. You know, the various degrees that there can be. I would it's say the perfect this. temperature is when you first get in, it's cold. But you get used to it within, like, the first 10 seconds. But it has to be cold when you first get in. But it can't be so cold you're sitting in there and you can't, like, move. But that's for swimming, you know. Yeah. 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 That would would not be good if you couldn't move. You would sink. Drown. Yes. That's right. All right. I, I guess swimming is a popular thing then. Yes. You guys go often? Yes, not popular, I mean, not but often. I mean, it's, it's, but okay. it's a thing that we do here. All right, in America, because we're free. <laughs> mm-hmm. Greatest <laughs> nation on this earth. Uh, leaf leaf color changing phase. Now, does he mean how long it takes the leaves to change from green to yellow? Or I have whatever no color? idea. He means he means the season About in which the, the leaves are. Uh, like a warm color, but haven't fallen completely off the tree yet. Oh, okay. I think it's... My answer to that question is, shit, I don't know. I'm sure it's different in different places. 
yeah, I, do, I don't measure things like that. So, um, but I want to say uh, it's the middle of October right now, and the middle of September is when the leaves start changing, and they're pretty much all gone by now. So, we haven't even seen them get red yet. Yeah, like, like they're getting there, but not yet. New Canadians. That, that is living up north, I suppose. So, um, yeah, that's where right. you live. So, yes, yeah, not that a is mud. correct. But the amount of time it takes them to change, I have no idea. I'm I've never cataloged that kind of data before. But all right. And now time number four, the thing. question that, well, lots of people have asked before to themselves. Uh, the correct answer is that you go to an Apple store and you ask them. Uh, them uh, uh, <laughs> okay, yes. uh, you ask them for some help uh, and counseling. Uh, counseling or canceling? Counseling. Counseling or canceling? Counseling, but anyways. Canceling. Got canceling. it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I keep hearing. Forced. <laughs> Reed, you've done this before. Give a practical answer. Uh, take your music, convert it to MP3s. Um, you're good. Can't you just right. get a different phone, learn that phone, and put all your music on that phone? Um, there's a lot of Android devices out there that have SD cards. And I'm yeah. sure you put all your music on a 64 gig SD card. Yeah, that's that's what I did. Yeah. So you don't just need an iPod. Just music to MP3 and then you're good. You really don't even need an iPod anymore. People don't need iPods except for children who don't need a phone. Or if you really just really need um, a separate music device. I mean, nowadays you can put it on your phone. Well, in Apple's case, you can't. Because sometimes people um, can't afford a hundred dollars for an extra whatever sixty four minus sixteen is. What's gigabytes. the minimum storage now, Shane? Six thirty two. It's sixteen or sixteen. Sorry, yeah, that is embarrassing. Yeah, and then a hundred dollars more, you can get sixty four. A hundred dollars. I just so like that's to point what, out the cloud. Three hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, but. So, Shane, how much data do you have? Two gigs. For a whole month? Yeah. Yeah, I got two mm-hmm. gigs, too. Or maybe I'm, I think I might be three gigs now. <coughs> I use I can use Spotify every now and then, but I can't 3G it all the time. It'll, it'll run up my data. Exactly. The, having the cloud is useless if... You have limited data, right? Yeah, and that's and that's really a bigger issue that we face in North America here that we'll tackle some other time. But in SD this cards. question, just um, tell Apple to make SD card slots. It, it doesn't work. No, right that now. that gets rid of their um, profit margin revenue. Oh, you guys. Okay, but it's real. that's literally what it what happens. They could you are easily. right. You are right. The prices do go up when you ask for more storage. But I would also like to say that if you use iCloud at all, um, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Because, Reed, I don't think you what used is? iCloud on your iOS devices before you switched. Doesn't matter. Just take whatever's off iCloud. Yeah, yeah but that... like what? What? He, he's Basically, saying having iCloud is makes it harder for you to switch yeah, out of Apple. That's yes, right. but why? Because there's no front-facing file system to iCloud. Unless no, no, you have no, a no, Mac. no, 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 no. What is on yeah. iCloud that I could possibly need? Well, I mean, for me, my to-do lists are on iCloud. Uh, pretty much Fight every. Like the bullet, copy them over. Okay. Pretty much every, uh, you know, game save or stat save or. St- preference save like that is also there so you're going to be starting fresh practically so if you have a new phone the preferences don't matter when you get a new phone it should start fresh that's just that's just a good feeling for me i like starting okay fresh. Personally. but the number one way to get out of icloud if you're wanting to move from it is that you need to 
start the transition early and focus on things like Google Chrome rather than Safari on iOS. Just do it. Um, Third-party solutions, LastPass rather than 1Password. Use iTunes to get any documents out of the applications on your phone that you uh, want to save because you can connect your phone to iTunes and if an application like Pages, for example, saves... Uh, documents you can access that through iTunes. So that's what you got to do, and you basically got to do it app by app, and then move it into your. Do people app. actually use like that stuff on their phone? Yes. Why? Uh, it, Can't see a damn thing. It integrates better than uh, you know all the other options. But with that being said, Microsoft's <laughs> offerings today are pretty good. And that's another thing, too. You're literally on a cell phone. Stop using Microsoft Excel on your cell phone. Well, I was thinking more computer. I was thinking more tablets, but... Sometimes I do do need to look at um, Excel spreadsheets or Word documents. Yeah, look at them. Yeah, look at them. I don't need to edit them. I mean, maybe on the fly if I really have to, but when it gets down to it, you should go to a computer if you're really editing... Yeah. Anyways, but but that's the best point here. Dropbox and OneDrive over any other Apple solutions. You do that, save your documents. That's a good start right there. How much free storage do you get for um, uh, whatever the hell your shit is called? Dropbox? No. iCloud Drive? Yeah. Five gigs. That's it? That's For it. free though, right? Yeah, for free. Okay. Bitch, I get a hundred gigs free on OneDrive. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'd also like to point out does have better um, that if you have Microsoft Office three sixty five, you 365. get literally unlimited. Yeah. Oh. And that's the best mm-hmm. offering there is. That's seven bucks a month. So. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. And if you have any questions, you can ask either of us. Because I was actually thinking about this this week. Just in why, know, like a... why he needs to know. We need closure, Shane. What's going on? Are you feeling okay? Do you well, need to go to an Apple store to get some counseling? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe about in about a year. Yeah, I'm just why. I'm just thinking of what. What do I do when this phone becomes too old and too slow and I mean, Apple is still making large you. phones? They're going to tell you. And I don't want one of those. Well, I mean, the, the, the newer ones. But, but you're not supposed to think for yourself, Shane. You're supposed to buy into the Apple hive mind. Right. They, they, it is better. You have to try it. It's no, no one ever said that. It gets better, Shane. It's better. All right, and on that note, we're going to end, end the questions right now. <laughs> Thank you, Colton, and everyone else for submitting your questions. If you want to uh, send us audio questions, email them to questions at com, or you can leave us a nice. voicemail uh, through the telephone. Just uh, call 571-57-B&B, which is 571-572-2632. And we do take text messages as, as, there as well. Woo. So, on to tech news. So you remember last week we had the discussion about uh, LastPass being uh, sold to the LogMeIn people who uh, do Hamachi and all those other things. Yes. Um, this week on the Security Now podcast, which I listen to weekly, uh, they actually had the founder of LastPass on the show, and he mm-hmm. basically gave a reassurance to the entire audience and the internet in general that he is still going to be controlling LastPass. It's just going to be under the umbrella of Lock Me In, and basically he's going to still have full discretion as to what goes on there and the way the servers work and the way the um, entire uh, service works as a whole so that should make people feel a little bit better but I know there's still some people who are going to uh, be questionable about it but both and the hosts what did on... the ever paranoid Steve Gibson have to say about all this he's, he thinks it's fine and he's going to continue using LastPass 
All right. And if he's not worried, and, I don't think I should be. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And and Leo said he's going to keep using the same thing as well because well he feels that key pass the only other open and vetted option is not usable enough in terms of sync. So LastPass is still good to use. So I honestly would echo the recommendations of these people and say that uh, not to worry, especially given that uh, the founder is still under control of LastPass there. So All that's right. just a bit of an update from last week. Also, this week... Be sure to update your Flash player if you are not using Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. Why? Be- because there is a new exploit that basically, well, allows remote code execution by way of Flash player. This means that a website, a nefarious website, could take control of your computer and do whatever they want with it if you're using this unpatched version of Flash. So if you're using Firefox or some other browser other than Chrome, best to update. Scary. Yeah, and that, and I mean that is the uh, that is the tale of living on the on the modern internet. There's just so much uh, stuff like this that can happen, and it's out or of your control. Or use a real browser. Yeah, Google Chrome handles it nicely, and I imagine or Edge. Uh, Google Chrome browser and Edge will be getting updates uh, shortly. So, um. And you know what I actually do is I just disable Flash Player altogether and enable it on websites I know and trust. Yep, Flash Block. Because it, it just slows things down. And I think that's the number one thing a browsing on iOS has taught me is you don't need Flash. And it just makes websites work. No, you just better. need inordinate amounts of JavaScript, which make websites run so well on oh, mobile. God, yeah. I, I, got, I got a solution for that later, too. Oh, but, Pick of the week. All right. Yeah, but it's a desktop solution. Mobile will be coming in. A so few it's weeks. entirely useless. Yeah, but I, like I said, in a few <laughs> yes. weeks, in, in, in a few weeks, there will be a solution for the for mobile. Trust me. Oh, okay. But I, I I can't speak to Android or Microsoft users, unfortunately. Only iOS. So. All right. And lastly, uh, Dell has bought a company called EMC for $67 billion. Why? Why? Well, Dell, like all other companies in the modern world, need to expand their business from just selling standard hardware. So they want to get into the cloud business, and this is how they're doing it. Uh, So this is the largest tech deal ever in terms of uh, money-wise. So Yeah, it is going to need to go through some approvals. Mm-hmm. Mm. $67 billion. But uh, you know what EMC also owns? What? VMware. Oh, I thought that was... No, VirtualBox is Oracle. Yeah, that's right. So basically, if you look at the corporate hierarchy now, VMware will be oh, owned by Dell. <laughs> Which, Why? I mean... I don't know, but VMware has enough enterprise customers that I imagine they'll be relatively untouched by this. And, uh, I mean... We can only hope! Yeah, we can. But where else are you going to go, right? Because VirtualBox doesn't really do what you need. So... You know, that's right. Um, And just in comparison, uh, the second largest deal was back in 2001 when HP bought Compaq. Why would they buy Compaq? Back. Compaq was... That was back that was back before oh, that was back the Compaq when... sucked. Okay, that's right. Yeah, Compaq was a utter garbage back then. <laughs> Though some say HP is bad now, but HP is not a very good company. That's Have a debate you for seen later. A fresh install on an yeah. HP computer. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> disgusting. <coughs> Maybe you Third... should do a restore point. Uh, you are literally cancer. <laughs> Third largest was Facebook buying WhatsApp. But anyways, so uh, 
should be interesting to see what Dell does with this. And who, who knows, maybe they could come up with some kind of integrated solution to rival Microsoft and Apple. So you buy a Dell piece of hardware <laughs> and you get some kind of Dell uh, cloud service with it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, not we'll likely, see. right? Just everyone's no. going to uninstall it. Everyone's going to uninstall it. But yeah, I share your concerns about VMware as well. So don't worry. Be happy. Thanks, Bobby McFerrin. Oh, is that who's saying that? Yes. Okay. Well. Uh, any other tech stuff you guys would like to talk about before we move on to skill of the month? I got nothing. Okay, then. Well, in this month's mining competition, Adirond Cronon, Touchpad Pro is still in the lead with 22.5 million XP to go. Uh, Carpi has flatlined. He is at 7.1. And Tyler has made a resurgence in the last week to <coughs> third place with 3.3 million XP gained. And that is Tyler, who has submitted questions. Tim has yet. zero experience. Did he die? Uh, like, no, I talked to him on the weekend. He's alive and well. Are you sure? Yeah, remember? I was going to invite him to that game we were playing. But he was going to bed. Yeah, but did you, like, talk to him? What if it's just uh, Alex? No, not possible. What if Alex killed him and is just keeping his body somewhere? That's dark. I agree yes. that is dark. And I would hope that they are not capable of doing that. But anyways, yes, yeah, so that's skill of the month going forward. Um, yeah, halfway left, and I think Touchpad wanted to get uh, 50 million mining XP this month, so he'll be half there by the time uh, uh, we reach uh, the 15th. So. When is the 15th? The well, before the 15th ends. So, All right, what do we got for the achievement this week? Mandy got 99 agility on October 14th, 2015. Congratulations. You guys think that's a good skill? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it makes you no, run not faster. To, uh, not to uh, demean you there, Mandy. I'm just messing with Shane. I hate <laughs> training agility. Yes. Yeah, so, so I commend you in actually getting 99 in a skill I can't train for more than five minutes well if anyone has trouble training 99 agility they should head to the uh, heffen agility course in Priftinus. it's really yeah, but don't you need like 90 for that yeah uh, let me just it's like really 80 quick. something i think <laughs> oh only 80 only 80 my highest skill is 77 so oh okay <laughs> well He's that's also not in Priftinus. That's true. Right. And I mean, you don't need to be there, and there's some argument that that uh, greatly uh, diminishes, uh, you know, what uh, what the skill is. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Well, you could do it, Reed. You're, you're level 84 agility. I could, technically, yes. Yeah. Or you could be like <laughs> Touchpad Pro, who is rank 8 worldwide on RS in agility with 200 mil XP. How do you get ranked with other people who have the same amount of XP? It's as just you? whoever gets there first. Oh. Yeah. Who got there All first? Right. Well, I believe it's time to move on to the pick of the week, uh, unless uh, you guys have uh, found one while we've been re recording here. No. All right. Well, uh, I will have a pick of the week. Uh, in a couple of weeks that will handle the mobile side of things on iOS. But this week's is for the desktop and Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, I think. Uh, it's called uBlock Origin. It basically takes disconnect.me, Facebook disconnect, those kind of things to the next level. In that you can granularly control uh, what is being loaded into your browser, whether it be, you know... Uh, tons and tons of JavaScript, like you mentioned, annoying videos, uh, third-party scripts, first-party scripts. You can have that kind of level in determining what you block. That is scripts that are on the actual web page versus from other sources. And it actually speeds up 
the browsing experience quite a bit, even on the desktop. You know, we think desktop browsers are fast, but there's so much junk on web pages we visit that, uh, I mean, you you should really have a look at uh, what's being loaded in and see if you want to go faster. And if you can, you can use uBlock Origin to make that happen. I should also point out that uBlock Origin also doubles as an ad blocker so that you can block ads with it and it removes the elements from the page just like AdBlock Plus does. So you killed two birds with one stone there. But Shane, you don't like AdBlock. Well, you I'm, think I'm it's saying unethical. I, I think it is unethical to a point, but I say that if a website is not being intrusive with their ads, you should definitely let them display their ads, like RSBNB, for example. Nice plug. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're totally ad supported, so I mean, we do want you to see our ads because that helps. So if you use uBlock Origin or AdBlock Plus or anything like that, definitely uh, disable it and put RSBNB on the whitelist. Um, I've just sent a link to the extension to both you guys uh, for Chrome, so you can have a look at it if you want. Um, it also has an easy mode, so you can just turn it on and have the most sane options. You don't need to go through each little thing. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a fun little thing and just makes the web feel a lot faster. So I've actually been looking for something like this for quite some time. It also lets you uh, disable, you know, Twitter, Facebook tracking, all that other kind of annoying stuff that's on the web if you don't like that kind of thing, which is what oh, disconnect.me did. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd highly recommend you take a look at it, Reed. I think it's the next step from disconnect.me for someone like you. For someone like me? Yeah, like, like mean? an advanced... Well, an advanced user who, you know, prefers to have control of what's going on in the system, like what we were discussing the other night about your uh, system tray. Ugh. So, so yeah, definitely give it a look. It's in the Chrome extension store. Link can be found in the show notes at update.rsvmb.com. Nice plug. All right. So what have we been doing this week? Let's start with you, Andrew. Oh, no, not me yet. Okay. <laughs> I have to think. No. Reed, go ahead then. Oh, shit. What have I been doing this week? What day is it? Um... Thursday. Hell, I don't October know. October fifteenth, twenty fifteen. Um, school. Okay, and the quest. If if you don't want to go any and further, the quest. Than that, if you don't want to go any further than that, that is a okay. Um, I'll anything guess. else? I'll, I'll go sad. before Shane. Okay. I'll let you go last, Shane. Go ahead, Dan. Um, I have also been doing school. Um, I have try been trying to train fishing as much as possible because it's my highest skill, and you know, you want more. What level are you right now? Seventy-seven. Oh, that's not too bad. Using the fishing guild, or no, I'm barbarian fishing. Okay, that's good. Very good. Uh, anything else? Mm, not really. That's about it. That, that's my life. I'm boring. All right. <laughs> well, uh, Reed, did you think of anything else you'd like to throw in, or are you good? I'm good. All right. Uh, as for me this week, I hit 101 million farming XP. Oh, it's boy. The it's the achievement of the week for me. Well, not an achievement of the week, but, you know, a milestone. Um, but, you know, aside from that, Quest, and, of course, talking to the lovely listeners of the show and Clan Quest. Aww. They are really a great group, you know? Yes, I, I know. am. Yeah. All right. Well, that about does us in for this episode of RSBNB Update, unless there's anything else before we depart. I got nothing. Nope. Andrew, you good? I am good. All right. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us, everyone. And we will see you next week for whatever update Jagex chooses to bring to us. Have a good weekend. Whatever Jagex decides to do. Yeah, whatever they decide to hoist on to us. 
Anyways, thank you and see you next week, everyone. Bye, friends. Bye. Bye.